Hello, and thank you for joining us for this special online media event. Today, we're unveiling a major transformation of the Dearborn campus. This new research and engineering center directly supports Ford's vision of making people's lives better and becoming both an auto and a mobility company. It also supports our three global priorities, accelerating the pace of progress on our one Ford plan, delivering product excellence with passion, and driving innovation in every part of our business. New collaborative workspaces will bring our Dearborn skill teams together and help us continue to strengthen our core business of designing, manufacturing, marketing, financing, and servicing great cars, trucks, SUVs, and electrified vehicles, and aggressively pursue emerging opportunities through Ford Smart Mobility, which is our plan to be a leader in connectivity, mobility, autonomous vehicles, the customer experience, and data and analytics. When the 10-year transformation is complete, we'll have demolished and consolidated 70 existing buildings, many of which are more than 60 years old, and formed two new campuses offering greater flexibility and connectivity in our workspaces. Here's a glimpse of what the transformation will look like. When it was originally conceived and built in the 1950s, the Ford Research and Engineering Center was a cutting edge hub for vehicle development. The new campus will honor that tradition and push the limits of innovation by providing the work environment our 30,000 Dearborn employees need to help drive us into the future. As part of a long-term master plan, many of the existing buildings will be demolished and replaced with contemporary, technologically connected facilities, filled with workspaces that foster collaboration and spark innovation. The transformation will unfold in two phases. The first is revolutionizing the entire R&E campus, the visual focal point of which will feature an all-new design center with more than 700,000 square feet of space for new studios and an outdoor courtyard for working and socializing. The new campus will be an innovation hub, accelerating the work already being done in all facets of Ford Smart Mobility, including integrating technology into the mobility journey, finding ways for owners to seamlessly connect their digital lives to their vehicles, and testing with the industry's largest fleet of autonomous vehicles. In fact, the campus will serve as a pilot location for a variety of mobility solutions, including autonomous vehicles, on-demand shuttles, and e-bikes to transport employees. The transformation also reflects Ford's commitment to sustainability. Current surface parking lots will be replaced with multi-level parking structures tucked behind the buildings, opening up more room for a central green area that will link buildings with walking trails, bike paths, and covered walkways. The plan also includes new geothermal heating and cooling, along with other energy-saving technologies that will reduce annual energy use in the new buildings by up to 50%. Water usage will be improved by up to 50% by using high efficiency plumbing fixtures, rainwater capture, and automated metering that monitors the overall system for efficiency and quality. The new campus will also feature a zero energy, zero waste sustainability showcase that will use advanced technologies to produce more energy than it uses, giving it a negative carbon footprint. Employee wellness is just as important as environmental wellness. Along with the walkable, bikeable campus, you'll also find a larger selection of healthy food choices, fitness centers, and even more surprises to come. Scheduled to begin in 2021, Phase 2 focuses on renovating the exterior of the iconic World Headquarters complex, including Ford Credit Facilities. Later this year, World Headquarters will be renovated for a more modern cafe and updated public workspaces. The transformation of the Dearborn campus marks another defining moment in Ford's history as it accelerates its transition to an auto and mobility company. This is more than an investment in new buildings. It's an investment in our employees. And we're wasting no time in getting started because work begins this month. In fact, tomorrow, construction equipment will arrive on the site to start pile testing for new parking structures. Most of the initial work this year will be related to the infrastructure and construction on the new parking decks. But today, we're live at IT headquarters, Building C, here in Dearborn, one of the first fully furnished and equipped new workspaces. And joining me are Joe Henricks and Donna Inch from Ford Land and Raj Nair, 
who's with our team in Europe this week, joining us live from our product development center in Mürkenich, Germany. And we're going to give you an in-depth look at the campus transformation plan and, of course, answer your questions. Joe? Well, hello, everyone. You can send questions anytime during this webcast via text, email, or phone, and we'll answer as many as we can during the live part Q&A at the end of the, of the session. The directions are included here and on the crawl that will be rolling along the bottom of your screen throughout this webcast. Back to you, Mark. Now, the key element of our transformation plan is that it consolidates our current fragmented footprint and replaces it with a centralized and connected campus. This improvement in physical proximity will help our teams connect with one another and innovate more quickly. It will also significantly improve collaboration, efficiency, and flexibility as we all work to deliver our One Ford plan. And now Donna has more detail about the campus transformation. Thanks, Mark. This transformation is, remar is a remarkable undertaking, and at the heart of it is an investment in making employees' lives better. The plan involves five key objectives. First, our new workspaces must be collaborative and engaging, creating a stimulating work environment. The campus must also be green, focusing on a consolidated footprint, efficient buildings, and sustainability leadership. Flexibility is also key with multi-purpose workspaces that support the changing needs of our employees and business. The workspaces must be smart with technology solutions that drive productivity and innovation. And finally, healthy with a campus and workplaces that promote employee wellness. This is the vision driving us. When complete, there'll be a total of seven and a half million square feet of new workspaces and studios, four and a half million of which will make up the new research and engineering center. Currently, we have about 12,000 people working on the R&E campus, and we anticipate there'll be about 24,000 people when we co-locate our core skill teams, allowing them to work together in new environments with great technology. The new workspaces will give our employees the power to choose where and how they want to work. No one is tied to their desk because the whole floor becomes their workspace. That's because we're increasing the number of collaborative workspaces by nearly 300%. Currently, the collaboration to employee space ratio is one to 20. When the transformation is complete, it will be one to seven. The new facilities will also offer plenty of natural light, cafes, and drop-in locations where employees can plug in and work at buildings throughout the campus. Joe will share more on that in a few minutes. The new office spaces and floor plans we'll be implementing here in Dearborn will serve as a template in all our global markets. Roger Gaudet from our Ford Land team has more insight into the research that helped guide our transformation plan. If we look back at when the campus was originally designed, it was designed to bring engineering, manufacturing, and design onto one location. We have grown over the years somewhat ad hocly in that we've moved some of those skilled teams around and off-site. The Dearborn campus transformation is important in that it allows us to once again bring the skill teams all back onto campus by consolidating those skill teams and allowing them to work more collaboratively. The project actually started in 2011 when we did a fairly intensive study of our facilities. The buildings that we currently have on site, many of them are 50 years or older. The infrastructure we have on campus has seen its test of time. In order to allow us to move forward for the next 50 years, there's a much of the infrastructure that has to be replaced. In 2013, we started to take a look at the workplace and have done a lot of benchmarking of other companies and how they work and what their workplace looks like. We hired a company that actually looked at a number of different buildings over a six month period. We collected over half a million data points that were used as part of our analysis in, in what our workplace looks like and how we wanted to go ahead and modify that workplace. We're utilizing the Smith Group JJR, which is a local architectural firm, to help develop a cohesive plan for the campus, both from an aesthetic standpoint and how the campus should be developed in the future. Ford employees are going to be proud to be part of Ford Motor Company and the environment that we're creating for them. Now, Roger talked about the tremendous amount of work that's been done to get us to where we are today. And now, Joe Hinrichs is going to give you a quick look at the new workspaces 
here at IT Headquarters C that reflects the direction and the philosophy going forward. Thanks, Mark. An important benefit of our campus transformation will be bringing our core skill teams together. This is an example of the collaborative spaces where this will happen. The low walls open up the space and let people naturally engage with their coworkers to share ideas and quickly solve problems. Every employee workstation has an adjustable height desk which can be customized for sitting or standing and provides health, comfort, and ergonomic benefits. And anytime anyone needs more private space to schedule a meeting or continue an impromptu brainstorming session, there are a variety of reservable and non-reservable spaces to meet those needs, all with fully connected technology. But the physical workspaces are just part of the story. The seamless integration of technology is also critically important. And for more about the role of technology in the campus transformation, I'll turn it over to Raj Nair, who's live in our Product Development Center in Germany. Thanks, Joe. Well, the new open office environments you've been seeing definitely will make it easier for our teams to collaborate. But how we integrate technology into the mix is equally as important as our physical spaces. This approach to workspaces and technology will allow more people across more cross-functional teams to do the same kind of collaboration that our product development teams do globally every day on our global products. The key is to make the technology seamless. It's supposed to enable collaboration, not interfere with it. And that's why IT is at the heart of the Dearborn campus transformation. We're creating an all new technology infrastructure that not only addresses our near term needs, but it's built with an eye on the future, able to handle the growth and advancements to come. The result will be a fully connected campus with increased data transfer capabilities and high capacity wireless for indoor and outdoor meeting spaces, including our dyno labs and our design studios. Inside, the high capacity wireless will keep, connect, keep you connected wherever you go in any building. And we're not just talking about email. This connectivity includes access to presentation systems, printers, and other systems that today require us to be plugged in. High capacity also means more people can be connected with more devices. In fact, we're increasing the capacity so much that can handle every employee with three connected devices and up to speeds 10 times faster than today. There will also be outside zones around the buildings, including trackside, where we can stay connected. So if it's a nice day and our people need some fresh air to clear their heads while they're at work, they can do that. Huddle rooms and conference rooms will feature wireless connections to screens and projectors. And select rooms will also be equipped with enhanced video conferencing systems. We'll be able to walk into a room, start conferencing with a single push of a button on an LCD panel. And not only will these rooms feature the latest in AV and conferencing technology, including dual wireless screens, they'll be standardized throughout the campus to ensure quick connectivity. Another great feature is the LCD displays that'll be outside each of the reservable meeting spaces. So let's say you've started an impromptu discussion with team members and we wanna move it into a conference room. A quick glance at the display tells us if the room is available. If it's open, we can reserve the space with one tap on the screen. It's that easy. There's no more need to schedule online. There's no need to stop conversations and run back to a desk to look up availability on a computer. When you put it all together, the technology, the physical spaces, I think we'll find that we'll be able to work together better than ever to, before to support our vision of transforming Ford into an automotive and mobility company. So last week I had a great conversation with Marcy Cleborn, our Vice President and Chief Information Officer, about the impact this technology transformation is already having. Let's take a look. So Marcy, your IT group is the first to work in the new space and using the new technology. How will this environment help us connect with our global colleagues? The teams now work more globally than ever, as you know, especially in, in PD and IT. And not everyone can travel to every location. And sometimes that face-to-face -face contact is so important to build relationships. So now, at a moment's notice, employees can have access to video conferencing that used to have to be scheduled. They can walk into the room and with one click, fire up a video conference face-to-face -face with their global colleagues and get the job done. So these workspaces are, are really going to be flexible. So how Absolutely. important is the technology matching that flexibility? 
it's really the key. If you think about moving around the campus or even off the campus, you really need to bring your virtual office with you. So your files, your email, the ability to print, the ability to connect to your colleagues around the globe, in, inside and outside of Ford. I know one thing that our teams are gonna ask, employees will be asking is, is why is there no mention of the actual personal computing devices and tools? That's the technology that turns the, the quickest. So it's really important that we keep our employees up to date. So given the, the transformation plan lasts over several years, to nail down specifically what the desktop solution would be, would be rather foolish. We really wanna make sure that we're flexible and so we don't want to tie ourselves to a single device and talk about that now because we want to keep current as the technology changes and be adaptable and provide that support. What are you personally most excited about, about this transformation? You know, I'm most excited about the fact that as Ford works on our vision to make people's lives better and become both an automotive manufacturer and a mobility company, that we're doing the same for our employees. We're doing these transformations to make their lives better, both the workspaces and the technology. Great, thank you. Okay, so it's now time to hear of all from you that are joining us today. And uh, we've been taking your questions throughout the program and we're gonna do our best to answer as many as possible. Uh, we're gonna be taking questions not only through text, so we're looking down on screens here, we're also gonna be taking them through the phone line. So let's start with the first one. First one comes from uh, Paul Eisenstein and this one comes via email. And it's how many buildings after changes and where are the new employees coming from? You want to talk about sure. the buildings? It's a, it's a little tougher to actually count buildings because we're, we're connecting up a number of buildings in a lot of different ways. It's a significant reduction. Uh, the number probably in the 50-ish range, but again, it depends on how you define buildings. The, the point is all of those buildings are going to be so much more connected and allow people to connect up together as they do their work. And this is not um, an initiative where we're bringing employees from another area. This is all about taking our Dearborn-based employees and consolidating them and getting them connected. Very good, and just, just to add to that, if you look at the Product Development Center, today we have about 12,000 folks mm -hmm. on the center. When that campus is done, we'll have about 24,000 folks, and of course the remainder uh, will be at the World Headquarters uh, campus as well. Uh, let's see, we have another question coming in from uh, Kirk Malte Maltese, and the question is, will this change to the campus result in any changes in vehicle production at Dearborn? Joe, would you like to take that? Yeah, thanks for the question, Kirk. We don't have any plans to change our production at Dearborn Truck Plant. Uh, clearly, we're invested there, and we love that plant. It does a great job for us, and we need the truck capacity. As far as product development, maybe I'll turn it over to Raj to talk about what, the, what that means for product development on the Dearborn site. Yeah, this is really a consolidation of our product development organization as well as with all the cross-functional organizations that we work with in developing that great product. So it's more about our staff organizations um, and that are distributed in Dearborn, getting them onto the two main campuses, the Research and Engineering Center and the World Headquarters, and not affecting production in, in the Dearborn area. Okay, very good. So that's uh, all the questions we have right now. Uh, I'd also like to just mention that our communications team are more than happy to take your questions. Uh, you just have to give them a call sometime today and they'd be more than happy to do that. And you've heard us talk about our vision of making people's lives better. And this transformation is about making employees' lives better at the same time. And today's campus news that we're sharing with you is yet another reason why I've never been more excited about where we're heading as a company. So thanks to all of you for joining us today.